Hello everybody and a welcome to your grand final time for the Dota 2 Moscow Epicenter Cup. $500,000 up for grabs. The land finals happening later this year. Uh, this year it's actually not that far away. It's like six, seven weeks away down in Moscow. In fact, as you can see, it's May. Uh, we'll be heading down there for that one. We're trying to find out who will attend uh, on behalf of America. Originally, there was a couple of other teams, including Archon in the running, going to the very, very late stages of the grid. But of course, Archon, with their problems, they were uh, default lost out of the lower bracket final, which was going to be played last night, hence no game last night. But it gave both Shazam and Complexity an extra night to prepare for this full best of five grand final. No winner's bracket advantage, Complexity but I do have one advantage, and back. that's mine. It's my co-caster, Scant. Welcome. Welcome to the grand final. We got America tonight. That that's a really cool welcome. Uh, being being called your one advantage, I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. And that's been a while since we've crossed together, so looking forward to it, especially for a grand final. I'm not. I don't consider myself to be a American Dota expert, but I'm very familiar with complexity and quite familiar with Shazam. And wow, the draft has kicked off really quickly in complexity with a pretty standard one of their favorites, actually the the Io Tiny combination. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't really expecting anything different from uh, from Complexity tonight. I was expecting exactly the same, all of the same, uh, once again. I was actually surprised to see what Swindles are going to let through for Shazam. Like, you take out the Intent Chantress, you take out the Bounty Hunter, but then you willingly give a team Earth Spirit. Now, Shazam did play Earth Spirit in their game, I believe it was two nights ago. They, uh, they played up against probably a, a lower-ranked team. Um, is the best way to put it. Uh, they played up against en Enemy, Enemy GG, uh, and they actually played the Earth Spirit in that game because it was it was willingly uh, let through uh, by Enemy. So uh, I'm I was wondering if he was going to do the same kind of thing, but it looks like Swindles doesn't care. He's just going to go with the Wisp Tiny, the tried true combination of complexity. I have heard some American players say that they think Earth Spirit might be a bit overrated. I remember at the Shanghai Major. I don't think it was a complexity play. I think. Yeah, it was actually, it was Mu, who was then playing for Archon, who said that he thought that um, Earth Spirit is a hero that's somewhat overrated because they draft your lane such that it's impossible for Earth Spirit to kill them, especially the mid lane. The hero is actually not at, not worth nearly as much as it usually is. And I mean, pointing to that exact same fact, Shazam start with the OD, which I think is one of the best heroes to have in the mid lane to, to set up those ganks for the Earth Spirits. But I, I, I tend to agree, actually. I, I mean, I, I don't want to make the claim, and I don't think Mu is making the claim either, that the hero overall is overrated. But I think that a very big part of the, the impact the hero is meant to have in the game is in those early mid ganks. And if a team feels confident they can deal with those rotations, then, you know, remaining. sure, give it away. Well, Complexity will be one of those teams. Complexity, like, when you draft a hero like a Wisp as well, like that mid rotation gank, while well, you can't threaten them away with heavy amounts of damage and disable, like, for example, a Lion would be able to achieve. You still have the Whispers with survivability. If it is against a Tiny, he's very tanky by nature as well. This is running the option that uh, Complexity put the Tiny Wisp in the mid. Uh, yeah, Complexity have had a lot of experience against the Earth Spirit. I can lean the same way, saying that, yeah, the Earth Spirit, uh, it could be underrated uh, for the early rotations. But if you can find him more space after that, like when you have the combination with someone like a Darkseer, which Swindles has banned out, like then it's a lot easier to run him because you don't need to have always the higher levels on the Earth Spirit to make him effective. Yep, I think that makes good sense, but again, you, you pointed yourself, they banned the Darks here, so they're confident to deal with the, the mid ganks. They banned the Darks here, which is a really nice, effective combination with it, I think. Um, and, and and that's going to be their kind of attitude towards the hero. We we understand how it works, we know what it does. I mean, look, we could be totally wrong. Maybe they just know that Shazam's Earth Spirit player is not that good, or they don't respect him. I, hey, I'm not hey, sure who I, actually I, plays it for them. I'm not getting involved on that front, man. If anyone's wrong, it's just going to be you. I'm Mr. Impartiality over here. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine. I don't, I don't... I don't mind that at all, and I'm actually extremely excited to see a Skyrath Mage picked up here. This is like, this is one of my favorite heroes to watch and play. I, I've been a Skyrath Mage spammer um, in, at any at any stage when it's a viable pick in pub games, and um, it's not the easiest thing for me to tell you exactly why they pick it right away here. I feel like it's quite nice against the defensive Astro in the sense that you can set up your ulti right afterwards. And speaking of that, it's Skyrath Mage has been picked historically exactly against the Wyvern in the same way Wyvern heals an ally and sets up your ulti. And also, you can silence the Earth Spirit, so 
I guess those would be the, the immediate reasons I'd point to for picking this Garth Mage. This is... See, I'm, I am I can definitely see the advantages. The magic damage coming out from Complexity is interesting. The fact that Brax, I don't know if he's just trying to stick to his guns for the drafting, because he's drafting almost exactly the same lineup Ten that he had uh, against enemy GG. I guess almost exactly the same. He's just Five missing the Invoker and the Slaughter, um, both of which are still available in the pool. But when you draft a Winter Wyvern, like Winter Wyvern manipulates the lane by forcing you to go to a different target based on where your physical damage is going to pump out. Now you're going to lock one hero in position for a Mystic Flare, um, or for an Amplification coming out from Skywrath through the seal, but then trying to blow someone up even more. So I can understand the synergy that Swindles is going for, Downside for Complexity's lamp is right now, Tiny is really their only stunner. There's a lot of control coming out from, uh, from like, Curse, from OD Imprisonments, from a complete reduction in mana from OD's attacks, and from Earth Spirit throwing out everything he's got. Now you go for Radiant another team. hero who, like, unless we're going to count Infernal Blade, doesn't really have that much control beyond the Doom on the OD, and that could be understandable. I, I mean, I think Doom pro provides... I, I can't Doom as a control hero. It happens to scale as a carrier as well, but I was gonna say, I, I kind of agree with you that with a tiny IO and Sky, they definitely need more direct control from their cores, but I think Doom is one of those heroes. You're gonna Doom one person out. Like, if you're worried about the TPs, yeah, the Infernal Blade is relevant there. Um, it's more surprising to me that Shazam actually picked the Winter Wyvern to start with. I, I suppose Winter Wyvern is considered to be a counter to Io and Tiny, because they're usually two heroes together, and so it's a good way to deal with the Io. You just get the curse on the Io, the Tiny slams the, the Io to death with that extra attack speed and all of his damage. But at the same time, it's it's really bad pick against the Skyrath, and so it's to me it's almost like they just didn't even react to the Skyrath pick. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's even part of why Complexity picks it, like preempting that this is the way that they're going to counter our, our Io Tiny, so we'll just go for the Skyrath. There's a lot of different ways to counter that IO Tiny. Like, you still had Disruptor and Witch Doctor available here in the pool uh, if you really want to go along that line. The only thing you might be worried about is the counter push uh, with Complexity potentially picking up. Well, at that Radiant point, they could have picked up. Back. Taken the Chen. Uh, but beyond that, there wasn't, there's not a lot of. Like, with the Enchantress and the Prophet already removed from the pool, there's no forcing down the buildings. So you wouldn't be too worried in like requiring Splinter Blast. You might be worried about the Enigma Ten pickup of complexity. Remaining. Like that could have been the other thing. But then Five Skywrath came in remaining. and then all of a sudden meh. Uh actually because I picked the Skywrath first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I would say that uh the Klings pick though is excellent. I mean we're criticizing the Wyvern pick, but I well, sorry, I won't say. I won't speak for you. I'm criticizing no, no, no. the Wyvern pick. I'm, I'm happy to criticize criticize the Wyvern. For the last month, I've cast three games of Wyvern. All three, he has lost. <laughs> it's, well, it's, well, there we go. Okay. I, I don't know about the overall stats. My personal feeling on it. I, it's just no, I've seen a no, lot no. of a lot of fail Wyvern. That's just Radiant come time and time again, where you just like you wonder what is the purpose of this hero? Who's he meant to synergize with? And well, right now, I don't even really care about the Wyvern too much. I'm looking at the Clinks and the OD having successful games, because if this happens, Complexity will have a lot of problems on their hands. Mainly, the supports will never survive, and the cores will eventually be DPSed out. Yeah, well, I mean, so as it happens, though, the Wyvern's stats overall are pretty bad these days. Doesn't it, it's, it's had some great games, but overall, most times in Team Picket, it's just not quite working out. And I agree with you on the Clinks. I'm not as sure about the OD, but I, I, I want to say, I think the Clinks pick was a brilliant pick here. It kind of forces Complexity to play a certain style, and Brewmaster being their last pick, I don't know if it's, if it's like, partly what they were considering, or if the Clinks kind of drove them there to some extent, because... Skyrath Mage and Io are heroes that if they get caught alone by Clinks at any stage in the game, they're going to die very, very quickly. And it, they're also not heroes that really want to be grouped up as five all the time, though. So Complexity kind of pull their draft together with, now that we have a Doom and a Brewmaster, actually it looks like quite a strong five manning draft, which at the start it looked like, you know, split pushing and nuking. And there it is. Yeah, you got is every hero apart from the Invoker coming in? Uh, Scan, quickly, man, I'm gonna see if you can either move the mic further away from your face, or if you can just turn down your amplification on your microphone. Um, it's mainly because you're topping out. Uh, your microphone starts to distort when you hit a certain level. So, sure, let me check. Yeah, so uh, just, just change that around. I, I can turn you up and down on our desk right here, so you'll be fine. Saving the piss ear, piss ears.
But that's a lot of pickup now with with the Winter Wyvern, a lot of Amplify, a lot of ways to kill off that Doombringer nice and quickly. Brewmaster Control, though, like, it's going to make up for the lack of stuns coming out from the Sports of Complexity. I still want to see how the laning phase is going to end out. Like, does the... potentially do a lot, and how much presence does the even really have in the lanes? That's the other primary question to have. Luckily, we'll have a pause, so it gives me time to set my overlays. And how's yeah, it just... now, Scant? I'm not sure. Does it sound any different, any better? I've fiddled around a little bit, but... Yeah, that's better. It's no longer spiking. Like, when you're basically having a, like a normal conversation, it was going through the roof. Okay. Well, that's obviously not ideal. But... Yeah, I'd... I actually... It's, it's back, it's back. Whatever you did, like, you start to get louder and louder again. Do you actually have your, uh, your leveling turned on or off, like, on, on Skype? Does it automatically I... adjust your leveling? Be where my I... is going? Let me have a look. Uh, I haven't really set anything. It could just be the quality of your mic. It could just be that. Just be my mic. I mean, I'm not my. I had like a a blue Yeti, and the cable snapped recently, so I'm using a like just a Steel Series wireless headset, which is meant to have a pretty good mic, but it's not not great, right? So <laughs> it could just be that. Could be. You should you should, you should get to your your Yeti back. All right. So yeah, okay. it's difficult to find the cables for those things. But anyway, let's. I'm I'm gonna keep trying to fit all the stuff, but let's let's keep talking about the game. Yeah. The uh, only real things that really happened so far is the fact that the early observer ward from Shazam scouts out complexity's movement, and the fact they also planted their observer ward there. So right now Shazam at least has a little bit more extra map information. Complexity are gonna try and make a play for the top rune, and when I say try, they will succeed. Shazam is gonna just forfeit it out anyway. They have no intention of going for that. So just be standard, Jesse, as well as MSS to grab the runes for either side. And they are going to run the mid Brewmaster. No the full PMS. In fact, looks like Chessie's going to go for the bottle build instead. Uh, Swindles, Jungle Abuse, Iron Talon. What a surprise. Um, coming out with him from the Doombringer. And that leaves the Wisp and Tiny combo up on the top lane. It's quite interesting, actually. No, no, no. You should have read this. Your Observer Ward is there. Your Observer Ward is there. Now they're going to boulder up and see if they can kill off Z-Freak, but... Damage has really already been done, and you can't actually kill off Z-Freak. Even with the extra help from the Arctic Burn, Z-Freak can still have Concussive Shot, which will slow down Savage. Actually, nope, they are going to bring him down. Looks like uh, Z-Freak's just going to accept his own fate. And they get the first yep. spot over to MSS, which in a way makes up for it, but it's still going to cripple the bottom movement. Yeah, I, I think it's probably still an overall win for Complexity. Uh, getting rid of the Courier and even the fact that the ODS do ran off away from the, the wave to help make that kill. I think it it's it's not that bad ultimately, but it's it's still a bit of a win for Complexity. Gives them a bit more control. And something I wanted to point out was you're talking about Swindles and Talon for abusing the jungle. It's not actually... I've seen Doom players both in the, the jungle and in the offlane not starting with the draw. Should we look at the action in top lane first? That's fine, keep, keep talking. Like, if there's going to be a uh, kill, I'll let you know. Okay. Uh, um, not every jungle doom actually starts with Iron Talon. Like, even when the doom's going to jungle, they don't always go for the Iron Talon build. And to me, go that he has the Iron Talon build is, is sort of suggestive of the fact that he's not planning to be involved in ganks that early. Um, because you'll you'll very often just see Doom go for sort of regular, possibly the Star Shield, just Ring of Basilius and Tranquils and farm, but also run into lanes. But with that Iron Talon, it seems like a bit of a commitment that okay, you're, you're actually going to be spending time just hitting those creeps and not not necessarily going to any kind of gank until you level six. I actually thought they're going to like try and dual off lane it and let the Sky Wrath Mage soak up more on the lane because as far as the laning phase goes, like yeah, Clink's got some good harassment, but at least Sky Wrath Mage can can do some level of CSing from afar and then Doom just soaks up the experience when the creep wave reaches him, or he does exactly this. But instead they've they've been forced to have uh, Skywrath, uh, Z-Freak, spend a lot more time up on that top lane and rotating over towards mid trying to help out Chessie with his lane presence. And th this is just their weakness. Like, the Sinnels gets himself... Oops, that wasn't planned. Uh, he didn't spend his money either, so that definitely was not planned. He dies to, a new yeah. he dies to the Centaur. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's busy captaining his team. He's like <laughs> telling someone do this thing, do that thing. Oh, whoops! I'm dead. 
And now he's I mean, it could just... He's even gonna lose the centaur to Savage. Savage came up for this and Z-Freak? Well, he's only got level 1 and he's only got 2 arcane bolts at that, so there's not much point throwing out anything. Yeah, it's actually very clever by the Earth Spirit recognizing, well, hey, if he just died to neutrals, there's a good chance there's some low HP neutrals up there. I'm gonna go take a look and... Uh, of course, because they have the ward, they have a good idea of where the neutral would be, so... Go straight off to the camp and pump himself up a, a big sensor. Right side for Shazam is MSS will finally have this bottle coming out to him on the courier. It's also coming with two pairs of boots. At the same time, there's two bottles being ferried out already. Uh, the other one's heading up to Hunskin up on the top lane. So the laning consumable effort for complexity is going to become a lot easier. AKA Chessie can, in fact, battle against MSS a little bit. But MSS is also hitting that sweet spot and with the extra help of Savage. Chessie, he can clap. He's still going to get kicked and, okay, he'll survive. Hunskin arrives. Gives him a couple of ball yeah. charges and Savage uh, rotation will fail. Uh, bot lane, there's also some aggression onto the Wyvern. I'm not sure anyone they gets can't, to die here. They can't really keep it up though. Like, TC, the second he pops that strafe, the amount of damage he pumps out is just too much. Like, they they can't they can't contest that. Not unless the Doom actually has Doom and I just get to watch Slaughter also accidentally die. Uh, that one I actually saw. <laughs> so it looks like both teams are going to accidentally die to that side pull. <laughs> maybe, maybe we need to change our now. Maybe the neutrals are just playing really well this game. Swindles? Oh, Z Freak. They try and hide in the fog of war. It did turn nighttime. There's a radiant observer ward up, so Z Freak as well as Swindles, it really feels like they're overstaying their welcome in this lane, and Savage is going to capitalize on it. He can almost boulder onto two at the moment, but he starts with a kick, hits Z Freak, and just tries to focus on the Skyrath Mage. Concussive Shot will not buy Z Freak enough space. And TC just a, a simple walk past the tier 1 tower, kills off the Skywrath Mage. And the tier 1 tower isn't completely forfeit. With the new creep wave arriving, uh, TC doesn't have enough damage and time to kill off the tower. It is the ward doing a lot of work though, as you pointed out. And I actually think it's it's unusual to have this ward up so early in the game. Usually people place it like round about now, rather than having had it up all the time up till now. So I think it's, it's kind of fair for complexity to get. And we see the ping there now. Cracked. Should be dead. Uh, they got an avalanche, they got a toss in two seconds time limp. May overstay his welcome for this, and yep, he has done so. Hanskin doesn't, well he's got tether available, there's no more bottle charges up. And he really wants to find that kill over on Brax. But uh, that takes way too much damage from the tower once again. And will be forced back. <laughs> yeah, that what could have just been, because you went for the iron talent straight off. Like, just throw it down so you can watch his progression. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's done lots of work for them, but Z3 kind of, yeah, we saw him right before the fight pinging it out, so he, he's on to them now, at least. So Swindle gets to return to the bottom lane. TC is still getting free damage into that tier 1 tower. And as far as CS goes, he's still keeping up. In fact, he's ahead of Limp. But Limp also has the ability to flash farm, which TC doesn't. But TC's got another great ability. The ability just to soak up those big neutral creeps. Get a huge injection of life and damage. Yeah, it's an awkward position in terms of the item timings because I think Shazam, they'll probably feel like they're doing all right right now. And when their Klings comes online and starts ganking, he's going to be very effective. But at the same time, you know, he needs those core items. So does the starter, so does the OD. And I, I almost feel like if Doom and, and Brewmaster hit their timings, that's the that's the timing you really have to watch out for in this game. Because sure, Klings is going to be able to make pickoff, so is Slaughter, even potentially OD. But in terms of like actually taking a fight in the early mid game, the Doom Ring and the Brewmaster pr produce a whole lot more than any of those heroes. So I, I feel like Shazam shouldn't be that comfortable with the early game, even though it's going all right for them. They should be trying to get something done b before the Brewmaster hits the blink dagger timing. So you're wanting more from them, but how do you get more? The Winter Wyvern can't rotate around and help get a kill. In fact, right now it looks like they're just trying to give uh, Jason that space on top lane to to get levels. That's all. Because once he's got the curse, at least then they've got some kind of big team fight control factor. Because uh, they don't have it from the Earth Spirit. This Earth Spirit's three and a half levels. And the upside for him is Z Freak's not really getting that much out of this out of this map. The downside is Hanskin is. This level six on the Wisp will be coming up, and he'll end up having that relocate, which means complexity will always have the numbers advantage as well. And TC's not in any kind of position just yet that he can go for picks. 
thing with a slaughter. Like, you got 5 CS on Brax. This is your offlaner, who's got 5 Dyer's CS. The Wisp, time. who is the safe lane support, has currently more CS and levels than the slaughter. Look at Swindle's plan to defend his tower. I don't think this is gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> this tornado is it's not gonna do it. It's a shame it almost looks it's a comical. Shame you can't deny with tornadoes. <laughs> yes. If you, if you can like... get the perfect tick point damage, you do self damage to buildings. Ah, uh, either way. He does get the, to the farm the lane. He'll actually push the lane back out. Not certain if that's really his plan. As, uh, well, we're gonna cry ourselves a quick pause. She's uh... in the middle of a. I believe that was actually a ward deny. Yeah, it's, a, it's an observer ward yeah. deny. What I was going to say, what, what I want from Shazam in terms of doing more is I, I want the Clinks to get involved. And it's interesting if you look at his skill build, he's leveling his Windwalk, his Skeleton Walk, sorry, ahead of Searing Arrows, which does suggest that he does plan to get involved. Because if you're just going to sit on the lane, farm, 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 you might as well level the Searing Arrows, and, and you're going to, by the time you actually go off the lane, you'll have high level Skeleton Walk. So I think it's definitely in his mind, especially the fact they give him a ward, which is so that he can go deep and get that important ward. It's in his mind to get involved, and I think probably they just wanted to kill the tower first. And I think exactly what we're going to see is is that in the next couple of minutes, Clinks might get directly involved in the game, posing some threat. I mean, look at the Skyth Mage in the mid lane. He doesn't have boots yet. Like, yeah, no boots, Skyth Mage. That that is food for for a burn Clinks. Most definitely. But he like, at the same time, like I'm all down for picking off the supports. But more importantly, I think you've got to reduce the map area which Complexity can control. Because that's where Complexity are going to make a lot of space. When Chessy gets that Blink Dagger on the Brewmaster, who really has not been shut down enough in this mid. I guess 34-11 up against 33-7. That's the CS of an OD versus a Brewmaster. And if it wasn't for that bottle pickoff, this might have been a very different story. But you're still looking at a point where Chessy is going to have Blink Dagger roughly 11-12 minutes into this game. Uh, and then he goes on the fight. And he'll be there with a Wiz Tiny relocate, they'll find kills, and then the Skyrise Mage can sit up on top lane and farm, or do whatever the hell he wants. This guy will get space. For me, I think that Clink shit, like, getting kills is one thing, but he's got to be able to take out buildings as well. So one good slight engagement, turn that into tier 1 tower damage. And the Clinks is perfect at bringing those guys down. Yeah, it's interesting if we go back to the Earth Spirits, it's, I, I don't think he's had a poor game. I think he's had a pretty good game so far. But at the same time, if we had that analysis early on, like, if one of the key roles of Earth Spirit is to dominate your mid lane and control the enemy mid laner, Earth Spirit has not had that effect on this game. Despite the fact that he's, uh, you know, you can't really fault his players. He went and stole the creep. He was involved in two kills. He's been moving around the map well, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, and either way, I think mostly because of Z-Freak's play, because Skyrath Mage has been all over the map, like, drawing his attention and sniping the courier and helping out the mid lane. I think he's, the Skyrath Mage has done well to actually counteract the, the influence of Earth Spirits. And now we go back to this analysis, and we're talking so much about Skyrath Mage to do with, you know, silencing people or, or nuking people, but I almost feel like the Skyrath Mage pick was designed for exactly this purpose, having a hero that's just as annoying as Earth Spirits, really early on in the early levels in lane because there was a time where i don't know if you remember the what the pile i die skyrath mage just like go stand in mid and irritate people there was a time where that was a thing it was very common and he he didn't just stand in mid but he's been a nuisance to the to the side of shazam for the entire early game i'm still gonna ask you man because it's, it's still topping out every now and then while we get ourselves a pause uh again just lower the input of your microphone Okay, inside Skype settings, because I've, I've already done that once. I would say on, I can... on, on your Windows, if you've got microphone boost turned on, turn it off. Because uh, it's just, like, your microphone isn't handling the audio you're pumping into it. Because mm. you, you, you can hear it where it basically just distorts when you talk. There's a certain tone you hit in your voice, and when you hit that tone, it distorts. Okay. Well, I'm... Playing around here, but I, I don't have boost on at the moment. Unless we get you to whisper just like that for the rest of the game. <laughs> that's, that, that was fine. Yeah, I guess I could just try, like, the thing is, I, I have to just try to stay calm all the time. As soon as there's, like, some excitement in my voice, I'm like, then, like, the... J just take the mic further away. That should do the job, bro. I am trying that strategy. It's, it's further now. Yeah, we'll give that a shot. See if it works. I'm glad Bracta's emergency is now over as well, so we can get back into the game. 
<laughs> I still don't know exactly, like, what this Earth Spirit even has planned. Because MSS isn't... Nah, he's got nothing planned. MSS can't fight into this. Even if he does see a weaker Sky Wrath Mage and Earth Spirit wants to ball forward, Jesse still got four points up in clap and then into a split. And there's nothing the OD will really be able to do against that. Especially if Z Freak isn't perma stunned by the Sky Wrath Mage, because then he's just going to get sealed and killed. So, yeah, they will both disengage from this, except the fact that Observer Ward is gone. And Shazam actually rotating TC to the top lane. Now, he rotates in just out of range of that dire Observer Ward on the cliff side. So, Limp and Hanskin will be unaware of what's going on. Especially when Limp uses Toss like that. He's very much unaware of what's going on. But don't worry, Z Freak is here to die. They get Splinter Blast and then three arrow down by TC. But that is not the target the TC was really searching for. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a target nonetheless, and... But, that, I mean, I was just making the point. Oh, here they go. The they find Limp with a pullback, Hanskin. He's got the Tether of Valble. And with the Whisper, it's connecting into TC. He understands that the Clinks is on the hunt for him. If he doesn't get mid, he can always just rotate it over towards the middle lane. Uh, I mean, get the jungle, he can rotate mid. Yeah, I was, I was just making the point about how the role of the Sky Earth Mages game has been a bit like a regular Earth Spirit or Bounty Hunter, and so in that sense, it's really the, the kill that Complexity are most happy to give away at any stage in this game. I feel like they're not that invested in their Sky Earth Mage, and in every fight of this turn, of this entire game, well, he's been gone on again, he's gonna die again, and he gets the silence up before he dies, they might get a return kill as a result. Yeah, TC's on the run, but they don't have any dust reveal. And with a kick coming over from the Earth Spirit, TC's got the space to get back out. This is exactly what they were looking for as far as kills coming into the clinks. Again, another Skyrath kill. Not a core. But it's starting to reduce the... It's even reducing the space of complexity. Because when he went to get that kill, Limp was going over and looking to farm up some of the camps inside the jungle. Jesse was still getting space in the mid lane to get closer and closer towards that blink dagger. The timing complexity, and we know complexity are a team who are all, like, every time they have a draft, they have a plan. It's all about the timing when they can murder everybody. And this timing still looks like it's going to hit at a reasonable time. I know that's a lot, that's too much time in one sentence. It's the Brewmaster's blink, and he's very, very close to it. And right before he gets it, he has an Invis rune, which might be able to set up a kill even without the blink. Probably one of the very, like, it's the lowest net worth core, <laughs> and Brax has seen this coming. The brew wasn't left mid until attack. now, so you like you know you know that something is awry. And Swindle's having doom means he can instantly go after Brax as well. So Brax just plays it from the trees, and Chase's got no way to jump and initiate. Yeah, I will say that I'm really happy on the other side of the map to see that the Clinks has bought a medallion. So there's some commitment to really early game focus. I'm gonna try and burst down the INR. Tether away though. The Avalanche was a little bit of a buffer. Okay, so with this rotation from the Brewmaster, like the Blink Dagger is now up on Chessy. So he's got that physically on his person. And that means Bright is dead. Yeah, see? <laughs> he was looking to actually blink in and clap. And now, blink in. Brax is still in the trees. There goes the clap, which means Swindles will be rewarded with the kill. Up on top lane, the battle continues to go. Limp actually man-moding against the clink. Not certain how they achieved that one when it looked like it actually started as a two for one. But now it ends up being a two for zero. The battle going in favor of complexity. And the OD's rotation as well. MSS moves off the mid lane to try and find an opening. And all Hanskin does is send them back. He relocates back to regenerate up, so then they can come straight back up to the top lane and battle with Chessie. He's got his split up and running. He's going to blink forward. Looks for the clown. Can't get him close enough, but limp. Avalanche toss. Say back low to the broom march. The curse from Jason is actually what's going to save this fight right now. And stop complexity from walking over Shazam with three quick kills. Yeah, that was an extremely important Winter's Curse. Like, they they would have run rampant there if that didn't happen. And sure, it does. they don't kill the Io, but that was like a, a very big save, very important, and had to react quickly in order to get it off. And Swindles can just outrun the DPS now of TC. And this is, this is where TC falls apart. If you can't keep that momentum up, especially against these cores, they're just going to survive his damage. Doombringer obviously already has the 
the movement speed to outrun the range of the clinks, but it's also the regeneration that comes along with it. Brumas got dodge or into split. And the tiny, well, he's a tiny. <laughs> So this Clinks needs to have a lot more damage. Medallion or not, this guy needs a Desolator. This guy needs more Crystallis in the Desolator. Yeah, he needs a lot of items in the bigger picture. The the idea behind the Medallion is just to say he's got enough items now that he can very easily make mince meats of the supports if he finds them. Like, they're not going to be able to even react. He's going to hit them a few times and they're going to die. It was, Hanskin actually did react the first time he introduced the Medallion, but that was just a, a, a fast reaction by Hanskin. You can see he was ready to tether away. Clinks gets like attack. three, four, five attacks off with the Medallion with the Strafe and support dies. And now we start to see the resolve of Shazam. And they keep their minds in this game and try and find a plan, because you know Complexity are going to start doing exactly what they're doing. It's the movement into mid, they look for another major target. They're hoping for a core or whatever. Their Observer Ward's scouting out most of it. And TC, now the smoke will break, and they have no... Well, it's they do. The they have the reveal over on the Brewmaster. But he's yeah, too if it was on away. the Skyrath, if it was on the Skyrath of the Doom, they've... they've very possibly make a kill there, but it's the hero who's running at the back of your smoke probably shouldn't be the only one that does. Yeah. You can understand the reason why they had the position they had though, because it's a blink dagger on a brewmaster. Like, he blinks into dust and clap. Yeah. But Chessy was just a, a little late to the party. Now Complexity will take another tower. it would be a fortification to slow this down. And TC... There's still the Dire Observe Ward up there. Obviously, he's hidden inside of his Skeleton Walk at the moment. But Shazam can't allow this to keep happening. Yeah, TC is lacking the damage. Plexity is so gripped up. I'm even wondering where you find a kill if you're Shazam. You want to rotate a Clinks to kill off one of the supports, but they're always walking with one or two cores. I would like to know what Brax is doing with his gold, because he's saved well beyond his blink. Is he going to buy it now? Okay, good. Because it seemed like he was considering a Midas, and I think that would be the wrong move here. I think he needs that blink, and he needs to be relevant now. The mass TPing in. They got an Observer Ward. It sees Complexity's positioning perfectly, and with an Invis over on the OT. Well, they are going to go in for the blink rush with a follow-up kick. The OD Imprisonment is trying to buy a little bit more space here. As the Swindles and Tiny are both going to go down. Swindles did get the Doom off, but that still doesn't save his life. And Chessie, now the split. It is going to come out. But this will be a very, very defensive one. Because the IO got imprisoned up so early on there, Fadi had no real presence. Z-Freak's lucky enough to be able to TP himself out of here. But this Brewmaster oldie is about to come to an end. He's basically surrounded on all sides, and he's at... Well, okay, there it is, the Earth Ruling. Can't blink away, and the kick's gonna follow through. Z-Freak, what can you do here? Like, you actually can't do anything. Complexity, this is the worst fight set up by that Observer Ward, and it will allow Shazam to practically wipe Complexity from the face of the Earth. Barzy freak. Yeah, and can I, can I just say we pointed out early on that the first Observer Ward, just by the rush pit on the cliff that Shazam placed this game, gave them huge advantage. I mean, it gave them insights into the Doom's jungling, the Earth Spirit Store creep, it got them a kill when they went, uh, helped them kill the tower. And this ward now is well, so just really all around very good ward placement from Shazam so far. Most of the advantage in the game. Real okay. They saw her coming in, it was a perfect kick. Arms get a limp rope being caught out. Hanskin, it only takes two real arrows from TT to find that kill. The avalanche toss combo. Try to do some work to TC, but they cold embrace means there's no fall off physical damage. Now swindles in too deep. Limp will drop as well, thanks to the OD Astral. And complexity forcing the issue and ended up throwing gold into the pockets of Shazam. And Brax wants to go for more. Clean crush, he finds Chessie. And Chessie, with no split, is a guaranteed kill, a double kill for MSS Complexity. They have just fallen apart in the last five minutes. Yeah, and I mean, if you had asked anyone going into game one of this best of five, are we going to see 17 minutes in, Shazam 12 for three and kills? Probably hardly anyone would have said yes. I mean, that's, look, that's like a very soft signifier of where the game's at, and I, I think this game's still wide open. But at the same time, let's be honest, Shazam are, are getting stuff done. They are getting a lot of stuff done. Their cores are looking very healthy, and Complexity have a little bit of catching up to do, which which they can do, but they're on the back foot for sure. It's not even just the cores. You look at the supports, when a, when an Earth Spirit's getting very close to completing up a mech, 
a Desolator I've wanted to see over on, on TC, and he's 200 gold away from completing it after that last fight. He's 713 on this board as a clinks. A lot of those are support pickoffs, but still, it's money kicking in, and then you get a double Blink Dagger team from Shazam. The last piece is probably going to be the Glimmer Cape coming in from the Winter Wyvern, which just makes life very difficult for complexity more than anything else. Because they can't yeah, just focus this... on one target, that's all. Trinx has finished his Desolator. Everyone on Shazam basically has what they need at this point in the game. Um, and by the way, that slot of Blink was absolutely vital in winning that fight that happened with the, with the ward at the mid lane. So, really happy. Brax, I'm sure, will be really happy that that's the, the item he decided to go for after saving 2.6k two, 2. gold. That was the first reveal of that item too. Like he, yeah. bought, he bought that Blink Dagger. You asked the question why he was banking his gold. And the simple answer is probably he didn't want to show it on lane. He was still farming up the lane, waited until the lane was gone, and then they had good vision of complexity, realized they wanted to fight, grabs a TP scroll, grabs a Blink Dagger, goes in, and then it's a real surprise. Yeah, that's actually a very good point. So I think you're, you're very possibly spot on, and that's what he was thinking, and definitely works out very well for his team. Well, oh, poor Jesse. He just blew his last charge of the dust. Um, because Clinks, this is now the, the second time I've seen TC, like, not even aggressively push, but they send him in underneath Skeleton Walk, and, uh, and then he just plants down an Observer Ward. This time around, he actually broke the smoke of complexity, they wonder what the fuck was going on, and then they trigger off the dust, and then there's absolutely no one there. Well, they are going into the rush, but not, and Slaughter's amp damage, plus Klinks' medallion, plus Desolator, Roshan is going to die very, very, very quickly. I suppose Complexity, even if they knew this was happening, would probably not want to try contest. It's a very dangerous thing to take a fight at this point. Yeah. I think Complexity are quite happy to split things up as long as they can. Yeah, Complexity realize what they've done wrong. Top tower like the, their, their play in the mid is one of these things where they may have just been like completely overconfident against Shazam. And they needed an opening like this. Like, just an ability to kill off Savage. But then again, with his one charges and his buckler, He's just so damn tanky. The turn around for this kill. Chessy's in trouble. He had no man to use. Brack just runs away with the Doom on him. So Swindles has no effect on this fight anymore. Because MSS has 35, 40, 45 stolen intelligence as he ends up killing off the captain. And Hans can just relocate in again. The Wyvern has actually done his work. He's bought the space for his cause to do the damage multiple times. Lip will go down. The imprisonment actually saves his life. But he's still dead. Just prolongs the ending of his life. A triple kill for MSS, 707 OD. This game is almost completely out of control for complexity. Yeah, it could have actually been a, a decent engagement for complexity if but for the defensive asteroid right beginning. And it's, that's something about this hero that sometimes gets, you know, overlooked. If, if you start going on someone and OD defensively astrals them, a lot of the time what that means is you need to now stop fighting because it's just the amount of time that it buys and like in terms of cooldowns, in terms of people getting closer, which is that a lot stronger in this game at this point in time and for complexity to try and do something after the defensive astral, I, I just think it's it's way too dangerous and mm -hmm. they get punished for it. That they do. But complexity won't give up. They'll still look at Shazam and say, we've always got a chance, we've always got a way to outplay them. You're running a Wisp Tiny, and you're seeing Limp's mindset too. Like, yes, you get the Blink Dagger, he was hoping for some initiations. Now, this game has to change for complexity. They have to turn this in to split pushing and reaching critical items. So Swindles, like, he's only got one level up in Devour. He's going to need to get a lot more of, of those levels um, to get more and more money flowing into him. The Brewmaster, I'm not even certain what you want to build over on him. Like, you need the mecha over on Swindles. I'd almost be happy with the Vladimir's offering just to buff up the Tiny at this point of the game. Uh, he, he needs something for, for a mid-game play. If they go for any later game play, Shazam's going to have taken out too many towers, and the cores will have reached a point where Complexity can't do anything about it. Like, I asked for a Desolator as well as a Crystallis over on TC. He's probably just going to buy up a Monkey King Fire instead with the Demon Edge and just go ham. So now even the evasion won't be helping complexity. Dyer's they have a very short space of time attack. where they can get control of this game back again. Radiant if not, Shazam will walk it over. Under attack. All right, so they're going to force in the bottom lane now. 
Because uh, it looks like Scant's having a couple of problems. Chassis. Also problems of his own. The imprisonment kicks up. And Chesty. Oh, good luck with this one. Like, the tier 2 tower actually goes down on bottom, so MSS for all of his chasing. Like, this ends up just being a tower trade-off. They're like, making the most out of the Aghanim Scepter on the Tiny. Letting Limp hit into the tier 3 tower. Now Brax to the front lines. They're still keeping Hunskin in the neighborhood, but again, this curse causing real problems. Limp is almost killing off, but he does kill off your teammate. And now with the ball forward, Savage way too short in that one. The kick, however, will be right on the mark. Complexity try and escape. They got the observer ward around here, so Swindles knew that Brax was chasing him. And Brax, well, where's that bash chance? The kick will be there. Swindles TP cancelled at the last fraction of a moment. He tries to turn and get the kill over on Brax, which he'll actually be able to do. With the help of the Infernal Blade, and of course the life that's given from Scorched Earth, he survives a lot longer than you'd really think. And we'll head back over towards the mid, where TC is up towards the end. I'll drop the Mystic Blade, TC! Sentry War drops down, it'll be saved by the imprisonment as MSS makes pick off every single Brueling. And now it's just the two supports remaining alive here from Complexity. They'll chase after MSS. Savage in the neighborhood again. They don't really have great tower pushing until TC arrives. And he's on his way now. Sentry Ward down or not, Complexity. Like they burn Brewmaster ulti, they burn Doom, so they're short of a lot of big ultimates, but Shazam is not going to force the issue. And uh, we'll see. Scant, do we have you back now? Nope. I guess we'll be uh, thanking the wonderful world. <laughs> okay. So we'll wait until Scant comes back. Obviously, I won't. We'll still keep on with the play. Shazam. Gonna look towards the top lane. I'm gonna go with the stream, which is good. The kick. Perfect control. Swindles is dead. Dead to the world. With the only improvement there, too, there's no escaping Z for Z Freak. This should be a lane of Rax. Like, you didn't even have to commit straight from TC. There's no fortification available here for complexity. They got no way to defend this team fight of Shazam. And this is actually going to be one of the first games where I watch a Winter Wyvern win. Even though I'm not going to put it down to him, his control positioning from Jason's been really, really good. But it's the board positioning from, from Shazam. Complexity, that fight that happened around the Radiant Ancient, that, that was kind of like... That was the point when they enabled the cause of Shazam to actually do work. To have the Desolator. And to actually have levels on their, on their cause. The mech over from an Earth Spirit, which stops Complexity from finding an, a quick and easy pick-off. Like what happened in Bottom River. Complexity are actually just sitting back at base right now, because they, they can't do much more. They hide and they're probably just taking this time to, to talk about like what has gone wrong. Are you back now, Scan? Yeah, I, I mean, I think I am. I'm, yes, not, you are. I'm not completely sure. Yes, we I guess we can test some stuff between games, but uh, I mean, Complexity just got completely rolled over so far in this game. They really, like, I talked about how they might have a threatening timing on their Brewmaster's blink, but have we seen an effective Brew ulti this game? I, I just feel like the maybe the one opportunity they had it was that mid-fight where the, the Slaughter blink got introduced and they just got caught out and Brew couldn't do anything really with his ulti, but I, I just... That spell has not done, had an impact in terms of controlling the game at all. That's how much Shazam have stayed on top and kept the momentum and been the ones sort of making the plays the complexity have to react to, instead of complexity making those plays themselves. And sure, we talk about the IO and the Tiny, which can go late and split push, but ultimately there's a, there's, there's, the Brewmaster and the Skyrath are both heroes that want to do things early on in the game. They Are they? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're all AFK for the moment. This is This is a... Like, exactly what I'd expect from Complexity. Um, maybe not this, like, Hanskin's actually exposed at the moment. So that's not exactly what I expect, and do they see Limp? <laughs> yeah! Rack's gonna realize what's going on here. Uh, Complexity are just sitting there talking. Like, they were, they were probably working out, like, is this game actually doable? Answer, no. Okay, we've got some problems. Let's just call it, we'll go on to the next one, because we're just wasting everyone's time at this point. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
Alright, well, Ken's dying again. Uh, <laughs> there's not much more to say about this game, guys. One fight goes horribly wrong. Shazam cores get everything they require to do their damage and have momentum into the mid game. Likely lose game number one. It's a full best of five, however, for the qualification of the epicenter land.